All right, in our previous video, we talked about synthesis, and we introduced this idea of filtration and these two types of filtration. So I want to talk a little bit about the technique of uh, filtration. So we talked about this idea of gravity filtration, and we compared that tr th uh, to vacuum filtration. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about these two techniques and how we use them and why we use them. Okay, so gravity filtration, we go ahead and we take a funnel, okay, and then we have that funnel typically maybe run into a beaker or something, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put our funnel paper in there, okay. Now remember when we take our funnel paper, we'll have our round funnel paper, and usually what we do is we filter, fill, fold it once in half, and then we'll go ahead and we'll fold it in half again, okay. And when that happens, we'll end up with kind of a V shape that we can open up and put into our funnel, okay? Usually what we'll do is we'll rip off a little piece. And what that does is that allows our funnel to fit really well when we put our filter paper in there and it sticks, okay? So we now have our, our funnel here sitting with our filter paper inside of it. Then we'll go ahead and we'll pour our liquid through there. Now then we'll go ahead and we'll see the, the, the liquid will filter through and we will have our filtrate here. So that's what goes through our filter paper. And then what we'll have left over is some solid here. Okay, that solid is called the filtrand. Okay, and so that's what's left over or the residue. We can call it either one of those. Just trying to identify if we talk about filtrates, the liquid, filtrand is the solid or residue left over. Now when we do this, we're going to see this is very different than we do vacuum filtration. Now vacuum filtration, we will have our vacuum funnel here, okay, and it's usually a Buchner funnel, and that runs into our vacuum flask, which kind of looks like a uh, Erlenmeyer flask with this kind of side arm here, right, and we'll attach that to our vac line and then we'll be able to pull the air through. So again, we'll put our filter paper in. Now our filter paper in this instance sits flat. Okay, so we'll have our filter paper sit in flat in there. And what this does, is this allows us to kind of spread out our solid. Okay, so again, we're gonna use our filter uh, paper to separate a solid from a liquid. So we'll pour our sample in there. And again, we'll get some of that liquid to come through and then we'll be kind of build up this solid sitting on top of our filter paper, okay? So again, both of these give us the same end product where we separate a liquid from a solid. Now, why would we choose one versus the other, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros or the reason why I would want to choose gravity filtration, okay? So one of the, the pros of using gravity filtration is that it gets good separation purity for our liquid, okay? So we see usually we use gravity filtration is when we're focused on the filtrate, okay? So we're focused on the filtrate, what actually goes through. Uh, we're, we're focused on that liquid. We don't necessarily care about the solid. Usually the solid is uh, left over, usually it is a byproduct or something we're trying to get out of the way, okay? Then we go ahead and we talk about our vacuum filtration, kind of the pro of vacuum filtration, kind of the first one is that we get good purity of our solid that we have left over. Okay, so this is important and usually this is also helpful to dry the solid. So we can easily separate the liquid from the solid, but this is also very helpful in drying our solid. Additionally, this is typically pretty fast. Okay, so this works really well for trying to get a solid residue, maybe a crystal we formed, and we're trying to separate that. And this is gonna do it quickly, but also dry it very well, okay? Now let's go ahead and talk about what would be kind of the cons of these two. Why would we not wanna do gravity filtration or vacuum filtration, okay? So first off, it's fairly slow for us to do gravity filtration. It usually takes a little while for the gravity to pull that liquid through, okay? 
and it's not good for drying our solid, okay? So again, if we're focused on the filtrate, we probably would want to do gravity filtration. If we're focused on the crystal leftover, we would probably want to do vacuum filtration. Now, what would be the cons uh, involved when we're dealing with vacuum filtration, okay? This does not give good purity of the liquid. Okay, so if we're going through our synthesis technique and we realize, yeah, we really want this filtrate, the liquid that goes through. Vacuum filtration is not that great because uh, we can sometimes get some impurities maybe that were left over in our vacuum, uh, our, our filter. Maybe uh, when we're pulling this through, we're aerating out our liquid and that's not helpful. And also, it's not good if we have kind of a small amount of liquid left here. Okay, so we have a small amount of liquid, vacuum filtration is not great. So we see we have these two techniques. They're both kind of underlying the, the idea of filtration, separating a solid from a liquid. But we can use gravity filtration if we care about the liquid, right, the filtrate. We could use vacuum filtration if we really focus on or care about that solid left over. So hopefully this gives us a good idea of why we choose one versus the other, especially when we go through the synthesis technique uh, of alum coming up where we're going to do both of these uh, in the same lab.